So, what is going on guys? It's the Crazy Mook here, bringing you probably one of the most requested videos I've had over the past month. And that is, well, two things really. One is uh, a walk around of this bike I've been riding for the past month, the Suzuki GSX 650F, and also a review. So we're gonna get both of these things done in one video and hopefully answer all the questions you guys have got. So, I guess a quick walk around. This is a 2012 GSX, like I said. It's a higher bike, uh, while my bike's getting repaired. It was in a little bit of an accident. And uh, because it's a higher bike, it is a complete and utter standard bike. Um, other than the exhaust, which 99% <laughs> of you are all itching to ask about, I'm sure. Um, it had this big fat silencer on it, and uh, I saw it straight away and I thought, hell no, is that staying on the bike? Uh, so I took it straight off as soon as I took delivery of it. So that's basically all it is. It's the um, the headers and downpipe and uh, that's it. Oh, it's still got the cat in it, so it's technically not a straight through, but it sounds really, really good. So uh, yeah, there you go. That's that one. Other than that, it's a completely standard bike. I wanted to do a review of this bike, but I wanted to make sure I'd actually done some decent miles on it beforehand. I've probably done about 1,200 miles on this bike in about a month, so I'd like to say I can give you guys an honest opinion. And uh, let's start off with the basic stuff, really. I mean, the looks, especially from the front, this thing just looks amazing. I absolutely love it. Really aggressive. At like, first glance, it can look like the Super Sport GSXR, and that's pretty cool. In my humble opinion, though, the further you go around, the worse it gets. Um, I think that uh, from the side, it looks really unproportioned. Like it looks really sleek and slender down here. And then at the side here, it, it just looks like it's got a big block of fairing and not a lot else. It just looks a bit unproportioned to me anyway. And then at the back as well, I don't know why, but uh, for a 2012 bike, it looks really dated. So you've got these big fat indicators and this big bulky uh, tail light lamp thing. You know, I would have thought they would have gone with some LEDs or whatever. It's not a big thing, it's just my, my opinion, right? The first thing that will be noticed is the weight of it. This thing weighs as near as makes no difference, 250 kilos which is a 400 kilos heavier than my 675 that I'm used to. It is really, really heavy. So going through some of the features of the bike, pretty much standard motorbike stuff. You've got uh, on the left-hand side, the high-low beam, uh, the indicators, the horn, and then the pass light on the back here. I don't know if that's a European thing, that might be. So if you don't have one, maybe it's because you're not in the EU, not sure. Don't quote me on that one. Um, also, you've got a uh, kill switch and electric start. <laughs> I thought they were going to get told off by the beach patrol, but whatever. Yeah, and it also has hazard lights here. Really, really unusual feature for a motorbike, and uh, I'm, I'm actually really enjoying using it, to be honest. When, uh, when I pull out, that's what she said. I'm saying thank you to people. Um, Yes, yeah, so that's quite cool. Under seat storage, let's move on to. Um, you access it uh, with the key down here. You literally just turn the key and pull the seat straight up and off. It comes off as one unit. There's not a huge amount of storage space back here, to be honest. ECU, battery, some important things. The toolkit here, which is quite cool. Some bikes don't come with a toolkit or a comprehensive one anyway. Uh, this is a disc lock that I'm sure the hire company gave with me. I don't think that comes standard with the bike. And other than that, I mean, there's not really a huge amount of difference in what you do with that space. There's not a lot of storage space there, although it's probably worth noting that on the underside of the seat, it's quite uh, caved in. So maybe you could use that to your advantage if you're trying to store something under here. So if we actually go and sit on the bike, now I know I'm going to get asked it, but I'm about six foot tall and I can flat foot this thing easy peasies. Um, as I say, the weight does become an issue, so if you are vertically challenged, it's something to keep in mind because I guarantee you that 
the tipping point for a shorter person is a little bit less forgiving anyway and with trying to support 250 kilos at that point it's going to be a nightmare um, so if we can go through the dash I absolutely love this dash I absolutely love the combination between digital and analog you've got the uh, analog rev counter and the digital speedo you've got a gear indicator and I'll put it into first there you go you've got uh, gear one gear zero is neutral that's quite cool another thing I've been loving is the fuel gauge however it doesn't have a temperature gauge and to be honest with you I would far sooner swap out the um, a fuel gauge for a temperature gauge just so I know that when I warm the bike up in the morning that it's at an okay temperature it's not a huge thing but it's just a little niggly bit uh, it also has a hydraulic clutch which is quite cool first time riding a bike with a hydraulic clutch and it's really easy to uh, operate absolutely love that compared to the cable ones now one thing I will say while I'm sat here actually this is really comfortable the seat height is actually quite low so that might help the people who are not as tall as some others so it has got quite a low seat height and it is a really really comfortable riding position it's uh, quite a sit up and beg bike the handlebars are quite upright but they're not overly upright it's still quite a sporty feel but yet still comfortable as I say I've taken the exhaust off the standard exhaust because that was ugly so let's get out of here and out onto the open road and while we're here actually the mirrors I can hand on heart say that the mirrors are the best mirrors I've ever seen on a bike that's come out of the factory you can see so much normally you can only see your elbows and armpits on uh, most bikes but on this you've just got wicked visibility one thing I've been liking as well is the engine. It's an inline four cylinder, liquid cooled, six speed gearbox, standard, one down, five up. And it is really nice. I love the sound of inline fours anyway. It has that real raspy, race bikey kind of sound. Uh, but because of the big engine, quite physically big, the bike is, when you're riding it, it actually feels physically big. Now, that's kind of a double-edged sword because when you're riding along like this in no traffic or whatever you feel like you have some presence on the road whereas on a smaller thinner bike you'd feel more vulnerable whereas on this you think actually no here I am lording up the road on a big bike and you feel more not aggressive but assertive sort of you feel like you have that presence there which is nice it's a little bit confidence inspiring to be honest However, the downside of that is when you're in the city, it's not as easy to filter through traffic as it is on smaller bikes. It doesn't mean it's impossible. is actually really comfortable as well I think they got the suspension spot on uh, they've got adjustable preload front and rear on this bike usually uh, you only get adjustable preload on the rear but it's it's nice it's soft enough to be comfortable on the road but it's not so soft that it feels floaty when you want to give it some in the corners it's actually quite a firm feeling bike when you want it to be one thing I will say is though that a lot of people asked me on my previous review I did of my Honda they asked me if I thought this would be a good bike for a beginner or a first big bike now I would say absolutely this bike on paper has got around about 85 brake horsepower which if you're under the new restricted A2 laws that is this bike is one of the most powerful bikes you can have with your license and it's a really really good option in my humble opinion I think that as a big bike you should have one that is really forgiving because you're gonna be making a lot of mistakes but also one that can put you in 
not put you in trouble, but has that ability to scare you. Because I think that that's what helps us as riders to learn and gain experience. If you've got a bike that you can full throttle everywhere and it is just forgiving enough just to do it, then I don't think the rider would gain as much experience as a bike that you have to be careful with. You know, you can't full throttle through all the gears, otherwise you lose your license due to the speeds and whatever. So, yeah, this is a good bike. It's a bike you have to be careful with, but at the same time, it's really forgiving for when you make mistakes. And believe me, over the month I've had of this thing, I've made quite a few mistakes on it. I think the common misconception about four cylinders as well is that you have to rev the absolute nuts off them to get them to go anywhere. Although, mm, on a racetrack, yeah, okay, fair enough. But out on the road where you've just got nothing but other bikes and cars and stuff, it's not the case at all. I'm doing 30 miles an hour, we put it in fifth. We just roll on the throttle gently. It picks up absolutely fine for everyday riding. Absolutely. It's got tons of uh, grunt down low. It's fantastic. Right, this is the first time ever attempting a 0 to 60 on this thing, so don't grill me. So there you have it. I mean, it's certainly by no means slow whatsoever. I think the target market for this bike is the type of people who go out and commute on it. And it's perfect for that. But for the type of people who commute to work during the week and also want to have a bit of fun during the weekend, you know, that is also totally acceptable. This thing leans over pretty well. And it also has really good brakes. Putting the ABS aside, they've got fantastic feel back. So I've, I think I've mentioned most things about this bike. As I say, there's not a huge amount of things wrong with it. In fact, it's just a solid bike altogether. And it's manoeuvrable as well. For doing U-turns, I'm so used on my Super Sport to having it's a constant three-point turns. Okay, so yeah, the, the turning circle is really good. I'm used to just a constant three-point turn on my Triumph, but this thing just easy, so easy. So I hope it's been thorough enough, and to be honest with you guys, if I'd known about this bike, if I'd ridden one of these bikes while I was looking for my 650, or looking to buy a 650, I would have bought this one in a heartbeat over my Kawasaki, hands down. So thanks for watching guys, if you've got any questions feel free to leave them in the comments and I will catch you in the next video. Peace out!